Good morning, church. Great to see you today. This is the second week of a series we're calling Gift Wrapped about the spiritual gifts that God gives each of us. So if you have a Bible, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if you would. If you don't have a Bible, you can raise your hand and ushers will be glad to pass you one. And if you don't own a Bible, you can keep it so you can keep growing in Christ through the week. Now, last week, we talked about the definition of spiritual gifts, that a spiritual gift is a spiritual special ability or a supernatural ability given to Christians to serve others. So that's what we're talking about during this series, those kind of abilities given to believers. And uh, the first uh, part of 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that we do have spiritual gifts. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have gifts. The question is, do you know what yours are? And some of us might be ready with that and say, yeah, these are my top three. Others of us might be thinking, I'm not really sure what mine are. And so as a church, we want to help you to know your spiritual gifts. That's why we've put this tool online. Uh, The the link is there in your outline. It's up on the screen. If you're not really sure what your spiritual gifts might be, you can take that survey, and it's going to help you get a sense of how you have used gifts in the past, Uh, A little bit about your own passion, your abilities, your experiences, how that comes together. And we also have uh, coaches who will be in touch with you about, okay, now what do you think you should do with those gifts and and maybe give some options that you can use uh, your spiritual gifts. So if you're wondering if this really applies to you, if you're a follower of Jesus, the answer is yes. You are never too young nor too old to use the gifts that God has given you. You're never too inexperienced or too mature in your ministry service that you can't take a fresh look at how God has wired you, where God may be pointing you to serve and make an impact for Jesus. And last week we saw in verse 1 that it's important for us to know about spiritual gifts. And so we did learn a little bit last week about spiritual gifts. But now in verse 12 and following, we're going to see that it's important for us to use our spiritual gifts, and that's what we want to talk about today. Why? Because others are depending on us using our spiritual gifts. Right now, there's about 17 crossroaders in North Carolina, and they're doing hurricane recovery work. Uh, When Hurricane Florence rammed North Carolina, over 11,000 homes were deeply damaged or destroyed. And so for many of those residents, life has not gotten back to normal yet. Our team is down there doing hurricane recovery work in the name of Jesus. It's really an exciting thing to know that they are being the hands and feet of Jesus in that area. Because when that hurricane went through, and people returned to their homes to see them badly damaged, a number of those residents didn't have insurance or the financial ability to contract you know, for work to be done. And I'm sure that a number of those residents prayed and said, God, we don't know what to do. Help us. Well, isn't it exciting to know that crossroaders are one small part of God's answer to those prayers, that they are there helping those who need to have the ability to recover. And how are they doing that? They're doing it by using their spiritual gifts. Because there's a couple on that team that had the idea, the vision to go and to do this work. They were using the gift of leadership. Then there was others who had the gift of administration. They were able to to plan out what needed to be done by what time, get the materials together. Some had the gifts of mercy. They're able to relate to the the residents there in a way that will be with compassion and encouraging those folks. They're all using the gifts of helps or service as they're doing the tasks needed to help get those homes back up and uh, in good shape. And some of them, they're, they're also using natural talents like construction ability, which I admire because I don't have any of that. When I went on a hurricane recovery trip, my role was to hold things for people that had those other abilities. You know, that was my role. Uh, but you see, they're using their spiritual gifts, and God is at work through them in response to the needs that are in North Carolina. Spiritual gifts are not just about hurricane recovery, though. Uh, they are about needs being met every single day, no matter where we are. 
You see, uh, there are people around you this week that are lonely. There are people who are spiritually immature. They need guidance and direction to know how to grow in Christ. There's some who are far from God and need to come into a relationship with Christ. There are all kinds of needs we're going to see. And God's people are the answers when they use their spiritual gifts. So why is it that it's important for us to use our gifts? Because others are depending on us using them. And God's purposes also depend on us using our gifts. You see, God has plans. He has, he has a desire to be at work in the world right now. He wants to see fewer people who are hungry and sick. He wants to see more people who are well-fed and healthy. He wants to see less suffering, more blessing. How do we know this? Because the Bible tells us this. He wants to see the kingdom of God come on the earth. That is, the kingdom is life when God's in charge. He wants to see more of the way his kingdom's to work happening on the earth than it is right now. And how is it going to happen? When people use their spiritual gifts. When followers of Jesus use the special abilities that God has given them through the Holy Spirit. That's how it's going to happen. Jean Nutter, not long ago, went for a walk. She took her dog with her, and she ended up becoming a hero. She didn't even get down to the bottom of her driveway when she saw a girl standing off. Uh, And when they locked eyes, the little girl said, I need help. Well, it turns out that little girl was 13-year-old Jamie Kloss. Three months earlier, a gunman had entered her home, killed her parents, and abducted her. And for three months, the police had been searching the region and couldn't find her. Her church had been praying daily for Jamie to be brought back safely. In fact, just 24 hours before this occurred, one of the church members brought a binder filled with prayers and put it on the desk there at school that Jamie occupied. And she said, we have just been asking God, please, please bring Jamie back. Well, when Jean heard Jamie say, I need help, something kicked in into Jean's mind. You see, it just so happened that, well, the cabin that Jamie had been held in was on, bordered the property that Jean lived on. And when her captor took off to get some supplies, Jamie finally snuck out of the cabin. And the first person she came across was Jean. It just so happens that Jean is a licensed social worker and that she had been specially trained in child protection procedures. And so when Jamie said, I need help, Jean's mind went into overdrive, went right to her training, and she said, kids need to be safe. Get them to a safe place first, ask questions later. The cabin's not a safe place. She can't go back there. I've got to get her to a safe place. And she did. And Jamie was rescued, reunited with the rest of her family. The police arrested uh, that gunman. And it all happened because Jamie was in trouble. God's people prayed. God answered through Jean. What if Jean, though, had not used her training, had not used the gift of compassion that God had given her and the spiritual gift of mercy? What if she would have just said uh, instead, sorry, you need some help. Uh, I'm off duty right now. Uh, See me at my office on Monday morning. What if she would have said, you know, I'm just walking my dog right now. Um, I really can't get involved. It doesn't bear thinking about, does it? But, you see... When God's people use their spiritual gifts, God's will becomes done more on the earth than it is otherwise. And that's why it matters that we use our spiritual gifts, because God's purposes are depending on on that. Because, you see, the primary way that God shows up on the earth today is through his people. That's why we are called the body of Christ as the church. When Jesus ascended back to heaven, he's no longer physically on the earth, but he's active in the earth. And he's, he's active through the people of God, the body of Christ. And so we read here in verses 12 to 14, 
Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Many parts. That is, the people of God all have many different gifts, passions, desires, abilities, and yet they all, when activated, work for God's purposes to be done on the earth. Now, think about this. What if a part of your body decides it doesn't want to work anymore? You know, what if your pancreas says, you know, I'm taking the day off today. Uh, That could be trouble. What if your foot says, I'm tired of being walked on. Uh, I'm taking today off. You're not going to like that result, right? The body of Christ needs all the parts operating. Ryan Chazier was a linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers until he was severely injured. At that point, he couldn't walk. His legs just didn't work. Now, he worked really hard for a long time, and because of his great conditioning, he was able to once again get up onto his feet, and today he is walking without uh, being helped, and without aid, and he even has a dream of playing football again. But regardless, the key is now his legs are responding to what his brain is telling him. Because you see, for a long time, his brain would say, walk, legs, and the legs didn't do it. And that really uh, uh, altered Ryan's life in a profound, profound ways, right? He couldn't do what he wanted to do. When people who are called by Jesus' name in the body don't use their spiritual gifts, It's like part of the body of Christ is paralyzed. The head, that's Jesus, sends signals to the body, and if the part doesn't respond to the head's signal, part of the body of Christ is paralyzed, which means God's purposes don't happen on the earth like he intends them to. There are many who will say, well, maybe you've heard this, there's so much hunger in the world, why doesn't God do something? Uh, there, there's people, there's kids that are just like without purpose and they're aimless and, and, and nobody's caring for them. Why isn't God doing something about that? How can he just let that happen? I think you know what I'm going to say here. The signals are being sent by the head, that is Jesus, to his body. But somewhere, some people are not using their gifts and God's purpose is not being accomplished as it's meant to be. But when there is that kind of responsiveness, then we see light penetrating the dark. Uh, Some some of our campus pastors were at a conference this past week, and we were uh, amongst some people really devoted to helping the people, the church, the the body of Christ to be activated in the world. And we came, uh, had a chance to talk with, uh, with a woman who headed up a group of women who did outreach and connected to those who are prostitutes and in the sex industry in their city. A lot of Christians can say, oh, gee, that's that's such a a seedy, dark part of life. It's a shame that that sort of thing happens and just let's not think about it. But these women sensed the signal from the head, Jesus, to use their gifts, to use the way God's wired them, And to reach out. And so they are regularly out on those street corners, developing relationships, friendships with those women. And going into the clubs, bringing them food, praying for them, encouraging them, offering hope. Light is breaking in into darkness there. Why? Because people are using their spiritual gifts that God has given them. And God's purposes are are, are advancing. Now, it's not always as dramatic as as that sort of uh, outreach. But... God is at work through his people all the time. God sees, for example, the hurting and the discouraged, and he sends his followers who have the gifts of mercy and the gift of encouragement to intercept that. God sees and hears the prayers of people who are sick, who are saying, God, please heal me. And so he's got people who have the gift of healing, including those who are trained medically, and deploys them and says, bring the kingdom. 
God sees and hears the, the reality that there are people who are spiritually immature. They don't know fully who they are in Christ and don't yet know how to follow him. And so he sends people who are teachers, who are disciplers, who have the gift of pastoring, that is watching over the spiritual well-being of people as they develop in Christ so that his kingdom is, is at work and his, his will is done. He sees a group of people at a company, a task force that doesn't really, ha- they're floundering, they don't have direction. And he sends somebody with the gift of leadership there to provide that sense of vision forward. It happens every day. Jesus' people responding to the head, making a difference. What are your gifts? How is God using you? It's a possibility that some of us here today might feel like our gifts are insignificant. We might think that, well, there's some pretty gifted people out there. They're making big impact. My gifts, they're just not that important. But 1 Corinthians 12 says, yes, they are. 1 Corinthians 12 says, my gift is needed now, right now. Because each of us has a part to play. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 15 to 17. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, Where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? No part is superior to another in the body of Christ. Some are more visible. All parts are essential. Because God does not give lousy spiritual gifts. You don't need to re-gift anything that God has given you. You know what it's like at Christmas. You open this gift and you need to pretend you really like it, oh, that's awesome. In your mind, you're thinking, who can I give this to? Well, you know, because you want to re-gift that. When God gives you a gift, you don't need to re-gift it. It's perfectly designed for you. And it's essential for the kingdom that you use that. And the results are that God's kingdom is expanding. Verse 18, but in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. See, whatever God's given you, he gives it just as he wants it to be. And that means two things. That means, first of all, don't compare your gift to somebody else's because each gift is valuable. And the gift you've got, the gifts mix you have, is not only perfectly suited for you, but it's going to make an impact. And secondly, it means don't project your gift onto somebody else. I've seen highly gifted people say, why doesn't everybody do what I'm doing? It's not that hard. Why They just don't care. They should just do what I'm doing. But the truth is, the reason it's not that hard is you've got that gift. But not everybody does. Not everybody should. Don't project your gift onto somebody else and say, you should be like me. You be you. You be an ear. Let somebody else be an eye. Let somebody else be the nose. Verse 19, if they were all one part, where would the body be? You could use the analogy, if the baseball team was all shortstops, where would the pitching be? Uh, If the band was all bass players, where would the drums be? You see, we are in the body of Christ in a particular place uh, and should celebrate the variety. Verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. So, we have gifts given to us for a particular purpose, to expand the kingdom. Others are depending on it. Your gifts are needed. And I I just want to share three basic areas that your gifts are needed in. First, your gifts are needed to reach others. For people who are far from Jesus right now, to reach the unreached. Now, this might be a little bit hard for those of us who don't have the gift of evangelism, for example. We might think, well, I'm not an evangelist, so I can't really do anything to reach other unreached people. It's true, statistically, most people do not have the gift of evangelism, although every one of us is called to be a witness. We're every one to be able to say, here's what Jesus has done in my life. But it's true that not all of us have the gift of evangelism. But your your spiritual gift can still be used to reach unreached people. Because you work together with other people, you form a team that can reach unreached people. I remember some years ago, I was part of a small group that decided that we were going to do an outreach into our community there uh, during community days. And so the group decided we were going to do a booth that would offer free popcorn, popsicles, and prayer. 
the three Ps there. <laughs> so we would offer those three things. And so the one person, pretty organized and kind of, you know, leader type, said, I'm going to go to the township and organize and get a booth for us all set up. And so that, she did that. Uh, another guy said, I'm going to find a popcorn machine. I think I know where one is. I'm going to get one. Uh, another couple people, they got the ice chest and bought the popsicles. Uh, when we got to the, the booth that day, then we all kind of split up the duties. Somebody's popping the popcorn. Somebody's handing out the popsicles. Somebody's running and keeping the ice going. And, and there was a few other people who were doing the prayer part of it. And together, we were able to just to serve and, and to bless many dozens of people that did not expect at all that that, we, that day they would get free popcorn and then somebody would pray for their needs. And it was really great to see God working, touching lives and people who did not expect to meet Jesus at the, at the community days that day. You see, your gift, whatever it is, can be used with others to team to reach unreached people. And so your gifts are needed in that arena and your gifts are needed to build up believers, to strengthen the church. In a couple chapters after this, 1 Corinthians 14, uh, verse 26 gives us a kind of a vision of, of what was happening in churches in the New Testament time and how it, how it worked, how it operated. It said, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. Each one of you, it says, when you come together, brings something, a particular gift, and you put it into play. Now, for, we do need to remember that the churches in that day were more like small groups are today. Because in a group this size, for example, it's, if each one of you uh, brought something to share, something to say, something to sing, something to pray, it'd be a long service today. <laughs> There'd be a lot of us here doing that. But that's why small groups are so crucial for our development. That's a, that we can be like the New Testament church in that way. In our groups, each one can use your spiritual gift in some form or another. And uh, so we build up each other in that form. We also can use our spiritual gifts on weekends and in ministries of the church. So, for example, you heard the, the video earlier. Some people are using the gifts to do projection, for example. Uh, others are doing kids' zone ministry. Some are doing uh, help and work uh, with, with students, with small group leading, all kinds of different ways. And for weekend services, for the ministries that happen, whether they're I lead or other, other places, we, we absolutely rely on the spiritual gifts of people of the church to make it a reality. So we can build up others. And if you want to know, well, where can I serve? What can I do? Again, you can take the survey online, or you can even go right to the ministry menu. We have a, a kind of a list of places you can serve out there at the Welcome Center and on the app. Uh, we have a list of places you can serve. So <clears throat> you can go there and say, well, I think I'd like to try that. And uh, you can get in the game that way. The third place, the final place I'd like to share, uh, is that you can use your gifts, and your gifts are needed in the community. In the community. Uh, because God is at work not just in the church. He is at work throughout this region every minute of every day. And he is at work through his people. So, wherever you are, be aware that God wants to use your spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts don't operate just in the church. They operate everywhere. I was talking to a crossroader this week who was telling me that she is really uh, quite active at work, at her job, at her office, um, using spiritual gifts that God's given her. She said that young professionals will stop by and she will encourage them and listen to them. She'll uh, equip them and develop them. And she asked God to give her words to help uh, those, those young professionals in her, in her office. And this is what she said. She said, uh, quote, there have been many moments for me to pray uh, with, for women of all ages in the restroom. Spiritual gifts work everywhere. <laughs> the Holy Spirit prompts and we pray. Some are believers, some are not. We have hugs, tears, encouragement, restoration, and the confidence of the Holy Spirit. Some moments are prayers of joy, some are prayers for healing, 
I've been told by our executives that I am the pastor for our young professionals group. Isn't that amazing? This is not a church. You know, this, is, this is a secular company, but her bosses are seeing what's going on and saying, you're a pastor to our young executives and professionals. Spiritual gifts work everywhere. They work in the neighborhood. They work in your school. Wherever you are, those gifts can be in play. Your gifts are needed there. That's because the kingdom of God is the break in where the, wherever you are. So, do you know what your spiritual gifts are? Are you using those gifts? If you don't know what they are, take the survey this week. Go through that survey. A coach will be in touch with you and can, will offer. You don't need to, but we'll offer to, to talk with you about how you can use those gifts, give you some options. Maybe some of us are, might be thinking, well, that's all very interesting, Steve. Um, interesting what 1 Corinthians says. But, um, you know, I've got a lot going on, and so uh, right now, I'm good. I, I, I'm good. Thanks for the stuff about spiritual gifts, but I'm good right now. May I say that that is not the point? You may be good, but lots of other people are not. And that is the point. That the gifts God gives you are not for you. They're not for your fulfillment or your entertainment. They are for other people. The needs of the world uh, require us to be engaged with our spiritual gifts. So, you're needed. God's purposes will be accomplished. And I want to say, I've watched with humble amazement so many of you so faithfully using your spiritual gifts to extend the kingdom that it's a tremendous opportunity to see lives change and to see not only people we minister to change, but all, the, all of us who are doing that ministry also change in the process. So let's, uh, let's talk to God now in prayer and ask him for his guidance. Lord, we thank you for you. Your you are the greatest gift, Lord. You are the, the, our treasure. And, and Lord, I pray for anybody here today who right now does not know that you, Lord, have saved and forgiven them, does not know the reason that they're here on this planet, doesn't know that there's life beyond this planet. I, Lord, I pray that you would be, by your spirit, Lord, uh, just bringing that gift, that opportunity to, uh, to their lives in a real way today. That as we open our hearts to you, Lord, that you will enter in and start that transformational process. And Lord, we thank you for those who have gone before us, who have used their spiritual gifts so that we could know you today. And Lord, I thank you for the many who are using their gifts, who are seeing you at work, who, who know, Lord, that, that their lives are making a difference today because of it. I pray we would, pray we'd remind them, Lord, that even when they don't see astonishing things happening day by day, Lord, that you are at work in profound ways. Give them just a little glimpse, Lord, of how it is that you are using their lives. And Lord, for those who are not sure what those gifts are, Lord, help them to discover that. Help them, give them courage to take steps forward, to, to, to take the steps that you're going to strengthen, Lord, so that uh, others' needs will be met and your kingdom will come. In Jesus' name.